Uh, hi, Robin. Yes, yeah. <laughs> Thanks for joining me on this day, this beautiful day outside, to mm -hmm. talk about the Peace Conference. Um, so just before we started, we were talking about your trip to New Mexico. Do you want to talk about that? Oh, okay. Yes. Well, our speaker for um, for the Peace Conference coming up on uh, Saturday the uh, the twelfth is Beata Ciosas Pena. I think I have her name right. And I was going to New Mexico anyway to visit my cousin, and uh, I thought, well, I'll just go and interview her in her location and at the center of the Tiwa uh, Women's Organization uh, in this town outside of Santa Fe. And, uh, and, and it was wonderful to see her there and to meet her mentor, whose name is Kathy Sanchez, and she was saying, oh, she wished she could bring, bring her mentor with her. I, I felt that there was a very beautiful and intense relationship between the two of them because the women's group amongst the the indigenous people there is 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 very strong and very active and very concerned about the environment and their concern about the environment stems from the fact that their um, their puebla is right there uh, next to in fact occupied by the los alamos nuclear lab mm -hmm. and those of you who may know uh, and follow nuclear issues. Uh, New Mexico has the most nuclear uh, uh, um, establishments. They are either uh, uranium mines or uh, waste deposits or a place like Los Alamos Nuclear Lab, which makes the plutonium pits, as I understand it, for nuclear weapons. Mm -hmm. So her tribe has been very involved in in understanding this. Many of her people work there so that they can't, they don't feel really that they want to close down right away until they have some alternative for their their people, but they're very concerned about the environmental impact of, of it. So she will be joining, joining us a Saturday. And yeah. uh, it's very exciting. And on top of that, she's a singer and a poet. So. Yeah. And, and she's coming on Friday before the Peace Conference and participating in a, um, um, a Young Writers Project event on Friday night that MGMC, Muslim and Girls Making Change, is taking uh, a leadership role in uh, organizing. There's like a youth conference sort of component of the, the evening, and then there's um, a workshop, uh, and then some some poetry performed, and Bieta will be performing at that event too, mm -hmm. which is mm -hmm. um, pretty exciting yeah. to sort yeah. of have more um, art influence the, the learning that happens with the Peace Conference. Uh, so we actually have a video from Bieta uh, inviting everyone to join the conference next or this coming Saturday, the the 12th. So at this point, we'll play the play that video so that you can hear directly from our keynote speaker, Beata. Hello, I'm Beata Sosi Pena. I'm from Hapo Inge, Santa Clara Pueblo, New Mexico, and I'm coming to speak at the Vermont Peace Conference now in May and I'm looking forward to being there and you know, I'm really concerned with the nuclear weapons prediction happening here in my ancestral homelands and all of the impacts that we face and I know collectively a lot of people are dealing with harm from militarism and all of the intersections that come along with that so I'm happy to be coming and sharing some of my story and our work that we're doing as part of Tewa Women United's Environmental Health and Justice Program. And I hope you'll come and uh, get to meet you there. See you soon, thanks. Okay, so uh, in addition, so the Peace Conference is from uh, 9.30 to 4.30 on Saturday. And in addition to the keynote, which we've talked a little bit about and um, hopefully everyone's super excited to come and see. Um, and we're really grateful to CCTV for filming that keynote as well. So you, if you are not able to come to the conference, you will be able to see um, the talk, mm -hmm. um, which will include some poetry as well. And, but you should come. <laughs> 
But in addition to the keynote, we have a variety of workshops that throughout, happen throughout mm -hmm. the day. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, so we don't have time to go through every single workshop, mm -hmm. but uh, I was hoping that you could talk about a couple that mm -hmm. you are uh, super and even about. even before that, I yeah, want yeah, to sorry. say that it's taking place at the old North End uh, Community Center. Mm -hmm. And last year, it was at uh, our peace conference was at the Winooski High School, which was a very nice venue and convenient for people coming from out of town because they could get right off of the uh, um, uh, 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 off of the highway. But I'm excited that it's going to be at the Community Center because it's such a remarkable institution that has only been there for what one one uh, year or so it used to be a you know a Roman Catholic elementary school right right next right across the street from St. Joseph's Church mm -hmm. and yeah, a lot Street. is going on there so I think just coming and taking part in our conference and being aware of the multitude of activities going on there that are sparking our community energy is really nice. Mm -hmm. So yeah, well, there's all sorts of wonderful workshops going on. One that I'm I'm especially excited about is called um, "How to Get Rid of All Nuclear Weapons." And in fact, I want you to take a picture of me. A okay, photo. yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, yes, okay, yes. because I'm into it. as a part of this nuclear ban, I don't know your passcode. <laughs> oh dear. Here, oh, just put okay. your thumb on. Oh, it. all right. <laughs> oh, okay. Um. <laughs> <laughs> All right there. Okay, I got it, got it. A nuclear Ban U.S. is an organization recently founded in Northwest, in um, Northampton. And so this is the kind of slogan. You did it? No, no, I haven't done it because oh, okay. I didn't want to get it while you were talking. Okay. okay. There we go. Good. Got it. All right. And you can go online to Nuclear Ban U.S. and uh, download this and take have your picture taken. Uh, basically, um, you know, the, the, the anti-nuclear activists are very um, energized now by what happened last summer when 122 nations declared uh, that they supported the abolition, the prohibition of nuclear weapons. 122 nations now agreed those are a lot of the very small nations, but they're also a lot of big nations. None of them so far are the nuclear nations. Mm -hmm. So the goal of nuclear ban U.S., and they will be doing a workshop at the conference, is that uh, we can work on the grassroots level to declare that we are compliant with the treaty by uh, having nothing to do with nuclear weapons. And on the municipal level, that means that the city council, that the retirement board and so on, scrutinize their investments and that they are not investing in any of the companies that make nuclear weapons or components or, you know, bring um, pizza to the to the nuclear companies that make these things. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, there's actually 26. Um, there's a list of 26 multinational co corporations that are involved in making nuclear weapons. So. It's, uh, you know, it's a sort of precise thing that I think shouldn't be too hard to uh, uh, convince our uh, city council to pay attention to. And in fact, the two people who are coming up to do the workshop, Timon Wallace and Vicki Elson from Northampton, were planning to meet with the mayor's office and start the ball rolling to make Burlington um, nuclear compliant, nuclear treaty compliant. Mm -hmm. So their workshop will be describing uh, how to do that, that it's a lot more than just, you know, maybe the 26 um, corporations that we want to have nothing to do with. But this will set the groundwork, if it happens around the country, yeah. to put pressure on our government. And, you know, I think the president is not likely to uh, respond positively to this, but uh, Congress can and uh, perhaps Peter Welch can mm -hmm. uh, respond to this. So uh, that's one workshop I'm really excited about. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, and you spoke a little bit to, to the style of the workshops as well. While there isn't one particular set that each workshop holds, the uniting 
sort of format of the workshops are that they all seek to answer what will it take to build a world beyond war, which is the same prompt as last year, but um, there are different workshops this year. Uh, so they all seek to answer that in one particular way. Like, uh, and, and that most of them are not just information. Like, here's, so, so that you know all of this information on this issue, but information that spurs action. Mm -hmm. So like that, that, that is, a, is a, a sort of another theme of the workshops, which are only an hour. So even the most exciting workshops leave out a lot because in one hour you can only do so much, but it's like here's a bit of information that we can all have together, mm -hmm. and then here's a bit of information on how some action can be taken uh, to address this little sliver of what it will take to build a world beyond war. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and that was a great mm. description of that workshop and also of the action part of it. Mm, you know, mm, that if, if we're all doing action. something, that mm -hmm. that is meaningful and can accumulate to have a, a larger result mm -hmm. than, mm -hmm. than we can maybe even see from mm -hmm. our own. Well, I think piece. that's so important to uh, emphasize because, you know, I, I've talked to some people and they say, oh, well, another peace conference. I've gone to peace conferences for years and we just uh, talk, blah, 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 blah. And <laughs> and look at where we are right now. I mean, uh, actually, the, the um, you know, the nuclear alarm clock is closer to midnight to zero hour than than it's been for decades. Mm -hmm. So, and military spending is higher than it ever has been. I mean, 54% of our discretionary budget, the amount of money of the budget that we can, that, that Congress can decide where to allocate the money, 54% goes to the military. Mm -hmm. And yet, the, the, um, the president is talking about as though we're behind and we have mm -hmm. to spend more. I mean, China has only 215 bombs, so they say, though one wonders how, how that... Nuclear bombs? Nuclear bombs. Mm -hmm. And that's so... That's minuscule compared to the 15,000 that we have. Mm -hmm. On the other hand, with 215, you can pretty much destroy the whole world a number of times over. Right, but we depending. don't need to play catch up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. So that uh, there just needs to be a uh, puncturing of the bubble of the nuclear spending um, and military spending and someone to say, let's sit down and use our money in a, in a uh, sensible way. And uh, on our workshop, um, Me Too and the Global Women's Movement. Mm -hmm. Right, you're uh, doing that workshop with, with two other um, people. With Marguerite Edel Edelman and, um, and Peggy Lures. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So Marguerite was in New York this spring at a conference on the Commission on the Status of Women mm -hmm. and, you know, gained lots of information about, for example, the global movement for CEDA, which is the Elimination of Discrimination Against Women, which is a, um, which has become a global thing. And again, that is an issue that couldn't be proposed to our city council, that mm -hmm. uh, we should uh, initiate some of these protections of women um, uh, in, in our city. And, um, and Peggy has been very active, for example, she went to um, Grinham Commons back a couple of decades ago, actually, but they, these were women who encircled a cruise missile camp in uh, England and stayed there for several years. Uh, and succeeded in removing the camp. So, I mean, my feeling is the time has come for action, and that's why our conference is so important, because we're talking about action. And right um, uh, <coughs> two days after the conference is the beginning of the Poor People's Campaign. Mm -hmm. Do you want to say anything about that? No, you should, should. I should? Oh, yeah, well, yeah. okay. Uh, <laughs> I but, want there to be things said about that. Uh, yeah, okay, the Poor People's Campaign is... Uh, I think an, uh, an amazing coming together of religious groups and union groups and activist groups. Uh, and it has a real moral compo component to it because the guy leading it, his name is um, William Barber. 
he's a, a minister from North Carolina who has been leading something called Moral Mondays in North Carolina every every Monday, going to the state house, which is controlled by far far right Republicans, and saying this is not justice what you are proposing. Mm -hmm. This is immoral, and so now he's bringing it uh, to a um, national scene and completely tied to Martin Luther King and his effort to have a poor people's campaign, which was what he was involved in doing on the week he was in assassinated yep. in uh, Memphis, no, Nashville, whatever. Anyway, um, and so here in, there, there are 35 states around the country who are committed to this a poor people's campaign. It's kind of top organized, but there's a lot of energy from the grassroots as well. On Monday the 14th, there will be civil disobedience at the State House, whether they are meeting or not, or whether or not they are in session, they are hoping they will not be in session. But in the 35 other states, um, they pro those in those areas, they probably are in, in session. The plan is to uh, commit the civil disobedience on State Street, right in front of um, the school, the uh, the State House, and you know the commitment to do it means you are willing to get arrested, mm -hmm. and so therefore it has to be done in a place where there will be a motive to arrest you. You can't just do civil disobedience on us uh, on a in a park or on a lawn because. No one cares whether you stay there all night or not. So here, uh, I think it's a very interesting new um, step taken that many people are feeling that they want to do something strong and drastic. And I uh, compare it to the film called Networks that was shown years ago where a guy was saying, I'm as mad as hell and I can't take it anymore. And he went to, he was on television saying this and he asked everyone to go to their windows and shout, I'm mad as hell and I can't take it anymore. We're sort of at that stage mm -hmm. here that we're mad as hell and we're trying to figure out what we can do to shift, turn, turn, the, turn the gigantic boat of state around and and start being kind and compassionate again. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, and yeah. to do it in a way that uh, is intentionally uh, movement building and looking at things through uh, seeing injustice in, and its intersections and mm -hmm. its interconnectedness too. So, um, and that's a, a big part of this peace conference as well is like this is about movement building it's not saying everyone needs to do this one action and then change will be made and our problems will be solved but more um, we, we're wanting people to participate in the peace conference and and register for for workshops that look at uh, building a world beyond war in a through a lens or um, in a way that you may not know a lot about yet or you may have not thought about the intersection of um, feminism and building a world beyond war, or uh, ec economics and building a world beyond war, or um, so on and so forth. And so to encourage people to sign up for programs that aren't necessarily what they have an expertise in or what they study all the time, but so that we can continue to broaden our uh, sort of lenses and how we see this work and how we address it, and to not um, feed into the sort of competitive world that sometimes we can get into in social justice work of like, um, certainly with the nonprofit industrial complex, we can get into that mm. sort of like, this is the action and all others, forget about it, this is it, um, which is really problematic to building a movement, um, having a, uh, an inclusive uh, campaign or series mm. of campaigns. Uh, I think that throughout time, strategies that have been effective have been have had multiple avenues of uh, taking on injustice. Um, so that's something that we're definitely 
looking for. And in that, uh, we're hoping that the Peace Conference will get garner more interest and enthusiasm in the poor people's campaign so it's not like a mm. comp, comp competition you mm, know it's mm -hmm. like people will come to the peace conference for whatever reason that brings you there all of you who are watching this come <laughs> uh and 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 you'll gain new information new actions new strategies new uh clarity and certain lenses challenge mm. different ideas and then also um, it, as part of the closing um, we're going to have folks um, from the Poor People's Campaign of Vermont and also Bieta, our keynote, who's very involved in the Poor People's Campaign uh, in New Mexico, will speak about the importance of the Poor People's Campaign and hopefully that will just help further a movement mm -hmm. for a change but mm -hmm. not be in, in uh, competition. Mm -hmm. And also I figured I should just like mention that the pictures that are shown behind us mm -hmm. are from last year's conference. Mm -hmm. um, so. We just figured we might as well put them up, and then if you see people that you know, you can talk to them about what the conference was about. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, you can well, be in them next there's, year. I mean, all sorts of uh, uh, interesting other workshops. I mean, uh, there is uh, my friend Charlotte Dennett will be talking about pipeline politics. She's writing a booklet about how the wars in um, in the Middle East, especially are taking place around where pipelines either are or will be because you can have oil, but if you don't have a way to get the oil out to boats or, um, you know, and, and brought to the United States, then how are we going to, how will our military survive? Because militaries survive on oil. Of mm -hmm. course, alternatives now are, have been developed uh, that put less pressure on on, on oil and pipelines, but I, our, our governments are still sort of like dinosaurs involved in, in, for example, Afghanistan, where the pipeline will go through. It's, she shows that that's where our bases are mainly, mm -hmm. to protect where the pipeline will be. It hasn't been built yet. So that's a, going to be a fascinating workshop. There is a workshop on North Korea, and uh, there again, just want to bring up the role women have played both in uh, supporting uh, Reverend, it's not Reverend Moon, but Mr. Moon, the current president who is seems to be a real peacenik, mm -hmm. and he's the one that's promoting the, the talking with uh, Kim in North Korea, and if anyone gets the Nobel Peace Prize, it should be Mr. Moon for, and, and, maybe, and maybe Kim together if they manage to make a real peace conference and not our president, mm -hmm. uh, although he's, um, he's urging, he's hoping to get it. And there will be um, a workshop on uh, the F-35, which I know many people in town, of mm -hmm. course, are very concerned about. Um, and that's led by Adrian Kenny of the um, uh, Veterans for Peace. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So. Um, and all the workshops, except for the first one that we talked about um, with folks from Northampton, mm -hmm. all the rest of them are led by Vermont folks. Mm -hmm. So it's all. Um, and I will add that it's Vermont people in Vermont who are doing this work from a, around the state. Mm -hmm. uh, I, right now, so uh, if you're planning to come to the conference, it's great if you can register beforehand. That makes it a lot easier on, on our uh, end. You can go to pjcvt.org to register. Uh, and I just looked at the registration forms. We have over 50 people already registered, and mm -hmm. so many of them are from outside of mm -hmm. Chittenden County. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. Burlington, like, mm -hmm. make it happen, you know? <laughs> like, what are, yeah. you, what are you doing here? Yeah, and, there's so many people from all around the state, and I think part of that is because we have presenters and workshops being led mm -hmm. um, from folks from around the state. And it reminded me because Adrian is from uh, Randolph, and mm -hmm. so, mm -hmm. so there's a whole crew from Randolph coming up. There's And, and there's individuals um, who found out about it through the World Beyond War website or through the Thousand Trainings Project or different things that have found out about yeah. it other places and then um, come. Mm -hmm. we, ha mm -hmm. we also, uh, you received an email from a musician. 
Is that oh yes, about? Uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, and um, who is uh, based sort of in New York and LA, mm -hmm. who um, is was really inspired to be a part of the program and mm -hmm. uh, is going to perform in the early part of the day as people get registered and settled, and oh, then right. also as part of the closing, which is really exciting. Uh -huh. um, yeah. Now I was asking you about mm -hmm. um, the gender. Uh, um, percentages at the workshop last year and you said about one-third men and two-thirds women and um, yeah I mean I don't know that as far as like a data uh, analysis uh, but I, we were uh, just sort of chatting like do you remember uh, last year how many and I because because I really want to encourage men to come of course uh -huh. and uh, <laughs> we were going to have a workshop uh, led by this group but he was not able to come the magazine for changing men voicemail and uh, I, I really think that, uh, you know, uh, more and more men becoming more actively peace activists mm -hmm. is, is very important. Uh, and we often find that it's women uh, nowadays taking the lead, but mm -hmm. we need to do it together. Mm -hmm. Well, and doing a lot of the um, sort of ongoing resistance work, mm -hmm. I think, uh, maybe not being seen as leaders within peace peace building always but mm -hmm. really being on the grassroots doing the doing the work on the ground which i also think um uh there's a lot of work being done consistently by folks of color as well folks mm -hmm. of color and women who aren't necessarily seen as leaders in peace movements um or mm -hmm. as you know if we if the average person from the United States were to think of like leaders for peace or nonviolence, they probably would think of men, mm, mm -hmm, don't you think? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, but actually on the, on the ground, and you can look throughout um, many different movements for social justice, it's often uh, women and uh, mm -hmm. women of color as mm -hmm, well mm -hmm. that are um, sort of on the ground seeing uh, and disrupting mm -hmm. this, these injustices. Yeah, well, uh, I'd like to make a little pitch for uh, my organ the organization I'm a part of, Women's International League for Peace and Freedom, uh, and uh, because we're sponsoring the Me Too and Global Feminism Workshop, but also we're very involved now with a project um, that would be in the schools in September, which mm -hmm. is around uh, uh, Peace Day, uh, announced by the United Nations, I think, on the 21st of September. Of yeah. September. And um, we're bringing uh, to Hibakusha, and I think most people have become aware of what that word means. That's a nuclear survivor or atomic survivor, a person. These are people, and they're all in their 80s now, I mean, because they were present in Hiroshima or in Nagasaki mm -hmm. when the bombs were dropped. And there is an organization called Habaksha Stories that is very active in disseminating information about um, these, about what happened and why it happened and how it should never happen again. Mm -hmm. So two Habaksha are coming up and possibly in addition, the grandson of Harry Truman. Hmm. And mm -hmm. he, Harry Truman, mm -hmm dropped the bomb, I mean, he gave the okay for dropping the bomb in 1945, and now his grandson is an anti-nuclear activist. And I, I think, think I maybe heard him on Amy Goodman, Democracy Now. He might well have been possible? there, yeah, yeah, yeah. And so um, we're really excited. We're getting, the schools are opening up to hearing this message, and we've been working very hard, getting grants and so on, and Maho Takahashi, who lives in Burlington now, was very active on something called the Peace Boat, which mm -hmm. is a boat sponsored by Japanese students, actually, that goes around the world talking about not only um, nuclear weapons, but peace in general. And we're very lucky to have her here sort of uh, uh, leading this uh, project. Mm -hmm. And of course, Hiroshima Day will be coming up in August, August 5th. And, uh, Five and nine, uh, the two two dates of the when the bombs were were dropped. So we hope to raise awareness um, at that time about it. Yeah, and the Peace and Justice Center um, 
always yeah. does some sort of remembrance. Yeah, um, walk into the that. river. Uh huh. Yep. Yeah. And, and last year we, lake. yeah, last year we partnered with Wilf in a more yeah. official way than in past times, which was great. And it brings up a good point about so the conference is um, the Peace and Justice Center is is presenting the conference in collaboration with the uh, Vermont Stands for a World Beyond War Coalition, which includes a bunch of different organizations from around Vermont. And um, as part of the conference, there, there will be tables with more information about all the different um, co-sponsoring organizations. And many of them, like WILF, like Women's International League for Peace and Freedom, have ongoing campaigns, have upcoming projects, mm -hmm. have ways to take action, have ways to continue your education. Mm -hmm. So. Um, Definitely, even in the sort of downtime of the conference, there will be some meaningful mm -hmm. uh, connections to be made and meaningful ways of continuing to take action. And so could you, could you talk about the youth component? Because there's one workshop that's definitely sponsored, going to be run by young yeah, people. One of our, um, one of our partnering organizations is um, Global Unity and Solidarity Club at Rice High School. And so we've been working um, since uh, the summer uh, on this, or late summer on this conference with a bunch of different organizations and individuals, and we've been working with students from Rice Memorial High School mm -hmm. um, from that, from the beginning, basically. Mm -hmm. So um, if, you, if, you, if people are, are watching and they have teenagers in their yeah. family or mm -hmm. amongst friends, bring them because we want the younger generation to get Right, and there's uh, actually more than this. just that. So the, that workshop, um, Let's Talk Generations of Change will be led by students from Rice um, who are also, so they're part of the um, Global Unity and Solidarity Club at Rice, but they're also um, part of the Student Diversity Union at Rice. So there's a bunch of different student diversity unions that have um, been formed just in recent years at the different um, high schools, uh, not just in uh, the Burlington area, but beyond. Uh, and so that these students are parts of both mm, of those, those groups. Mm -hmm. um, and then also uh, a workshop that's happening in session two, uh, seeing and disrupting racism within pre predominantly white communities is being led by two folks um, from a Hardwick, Cabot sort of area of Vermont. Um, and one of them is a, is a high school student as well. Um, who's co-leading the that program and is really an amazing facilitator and great in a lot of ways. And then also in session one, um, Building Empathy and Hope with Kids for Peace is being led by Jeff Mandel, who's the um, staff person for Kids for, for Peace, along with students from Kids mm. for Peace. So mm -hmm. if you wanted to come as a, as a student or as a young person and be in all programs that were led or facilitated by high school students um, or co-led by an, an adult and a high school student, then you could, because you could, session one, you could sign up for um, the Building Empathy and Hope with Kids for Peace, in session two, Seeing and Disrupting Racism, and in three, Let's Talk Generations of Change. And and that's sort of, uh, and that's, that's sort of the hope with the conference is that there's sort of a particular aspect of um, disrupting uh, this, the military industrial complex and or building a world beyond war. So there's, that's sort of, mm -hmm part of the same thing, but it's mm -hmm. it's different, you know? Not all of them are necessarily anti-war. Some are about building something different. Um, but there's there really are so many different workshops. And and nonviolence. The, yeah. There's, mm -hmm. there's a workshop on nonviolence. Who's, yep. who's leading that? Um, that's being led by Catherine Caden and Jesse Waynes. I'm so sorry now that I'm pronouncing that wrong. Uh, and they do Play in the Wild um, and... Uh, Baba Tree International and uh, play in the wild. Yeah, that's, what's that? That's a um, uh, a program that works with young people and uh, does nonviolence work um, in incorporated with like nature programs. Oh, uh, wow. I'm definitely not expecting to to have been asked the, these questions, so I'm not <laughs> speaking as articulately. Okay. But you can look them up online, uh -huh. and they're. Um, really doing, um, in my opinion, really meaningful work. And the work that they do um, meaningfully thinks about systems of oppression in a way that I don't know that um, is 
the given for nonviolence work. I, some, mm. I think sometimes um, nonviolence work definitely looks at nonviolence as a tool for the oppressed and in taking on uh, systems of oppression in, in the nonviolence work. And other times it's, um, it doesn't meaningfully look at that. And I think that the work that they do um, does, does look at that. And also they um, oftentimes work with young people. So that's another mm -hmm. program that uh, if you're a young person and you're like, I just don't want to go and be lectured on a Saturday, especially if you're from Burlington, it's also prom. So you may be oh. <laughs> um, getting ready for prom uh, or you may want to go to this conference and then get ready for prom and then go to prom. And so it's a high school prom night? Yeah. Oh. <laughs> Burlington High School. <laughs> but like come earlier if, if unless you have to get ready all day, mm -hmm. which... Mm -hmm. Some, sometimes people do. Wow. Well, you've touched on most of the um, uh, workshops. Um, also, there's Cuba and Latin America, the Cold War, then and now. Sandy Baird, she's a she's a very good speaker about these issues. Has traveled to Cuba a lot of times, and of course, there's a there's a Bolivarian revolution going on in Latin America that we don't hear much about, but which is being uh, undermined by our government, of course, um, but uh, a sort of a progressive wave uh, across the continent uh, for the last couple of decades uh, that involved Bolivia and Ecuador and, and Brazil and Venezuela and Cuba. And um, now that's struggling to maintain their, um, their impetus of progressive, uh, progressive actions. So she'll be talking about that, the meaning of Jerusalem, the capital of Israel. Yeah, she's also co-leading that, that with Lisa. Uh-huh, mm -hmm. uh -huh. okay. Yeah, there's a lot of great programs. Also, if you can't come for the whole day, come for part of it. Um, lunch is included in the registration and is Nepali Kitchen. That's like mm. been a big selling point when I talk to folks about it. It's like, mm. you'll get some good, uh, you'll you'll be fed um, as far as your inspiration as a person wanting to disrupt injustice, and then mm. you'll also be well fed. Mm. In a and more what's the cost? Sense. Um, there's twenty. It's twenty five dollars. Uh huh. Okay. Um, and no one's turned away for lack of funds. People under twenty five are not expected to contribute financially. Uh, it's on the registration form. It's like how much can you contribute? Uh, a, a big chunk of the expenses for the conference are covered by. Um, a grant as well as some individual contributions and um, and actually a few grants, a few different grants. So the hope is that people will not let cost get in the way um, mm -hmm. and also not busyness. So if you could just come for a part, just come for a part. Mm -hmm. um, and in the downtime, there'll be some music at the beginning and at the end. There are also um, the Peace and Justice Center programming team created a turned a tower game, most people call Jenga, but that's like the name brand version, but tower game um, added a trivia component. So in the, in the lunchtime, when people are just mingling and at the beginning and at the end, we'll have um, little tower games everywhere with little trivia cards and they have to do with um, sort of the intersections of imperialism, patriarchy, uh, climate injustice and uh, racism. So each of the cards ha has a different sort of focus on that. Wow. And so as you play, if you pull out a, like a Jenga piece, a wood block that has a question on it, then you pick up the card and then you ask it. So there's like oh, cool. really fun uh, ways. If you don't know anybody who's going and you're like, oh, it's gonna be so awkward. Everyone's gonna know each other. Just come like sit at a table with a game. You'll get to know people that way. Um, we also have a, anti-war jeopardy game that we created that's a, an actual workshop at the end just thinking that sometimes people might just want to participate in like a game that's educational at the mm. end of the day mm -hmm. um so we're really hoping that people will come people will participate for however much they mm. can um, we'll get involved in the poor people's campaign 
uh, as it's being launched, and also will continue to be involved in all of the different organizations that have been a part of mm -hmm. um, putting this together mm -hmm. um, and stay connected with the Peace and Justice Center, of course. Also. Well, it sounds like it's going to be wonderful. Yeah. And now everyone knows all about it. Because <laughs> <laughs> we did it all in this amount of time. <laughs> now there's still a lot more to figure out, but um, okay. we are going to end um, by showing a, a short video that's um, a uh, about the keynote speaker again and the the work that's being done in in that community just in case people weren't here for the beginning when we talked about um, the the keynote okay uh, and so we'll play that and then that's and then that's, that's it. it okay well sure thanks Kyle thank you this so much Robin <laughs> it's been great <laughs> <laughs> okay okay and if you've bye got bye. any questions feel free to email us or look online pjcvt.org my email is kyle k-y-l-e at pjcvt.org mm, uh, okay so get involved bye bye Unpi at gindi jia in tara in I am of this place spirit rooted where mountains are elders I look to for guidance since time immemorial, we have cultivated and cared for our existence in this land. Not long ago, I began to hear explosions that would rumble through our canyons. I learned it was the bombs that Los Alamos National Laboratory was testing or disposing of. The fear I felt for my family was equal only to my empathy for the women and children on the receiving end of these weapons. Since then, I have had the opportunity to learn more about what is taking place in my homelands. I learned how my home is the most contaminated nuclear site in the nation for airborne plutonium. How PCBs and other chemicals are migrating into our aquifer, and how safety standards do not protect those most vulnerable. Our life, our water, rests beneath a nuclear waste dump up on a mesa known as Area G, where ancient kivas are now full of barrels of mixed radioactive waste. Our traditions teach us of reciprocity with the land, how what we give is what we get back. No longer can our people's jobs be dependent on an industry that conflicts with our values and beliefs. I pray every day that the nuclear age and the culture of violence transforms for clean earth, air, and water so we can be free of fear from invisible poison. I come from people who create gardens, who are seed savers and life givers, who sing prayers, who take care of future generations and follow natural law. This knowledge is waiting for us as we continue to resist the acute harm we know is happening through our creativity, our spirituality, our voices, community education, and a return to our traditional sustaining ways and a commitment to life.